Revelation chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And I heard the first voice that said, Come up hither. Come up hither. Someone who is about to step up, shout the loudest, Amen. So I'm speaking on the subject, come up hither, dash, supernatural lifts and shifts. Come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Come up hither, supernatural lifts and shifts. Our objective is to understand supernatural lifts and shifts. And secondly, we want to understand the secrets of supernatural lifts and shifts. We have and serve a God of supernatural lifts, a God of supernatural shifts. It is natural with God to lift and it is natural with him to shift lives and destinies. In Psalm 84 verse 7, the Bible said, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before the Lord. They go from strength to strength, from level to level, from shift to shift. In Romans chapter 1 verse 17, it said the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. From faith to faith, we serve a God who moves people from level to level, from dimension to dimension. In Proverbs chapter 4 and in verse 18, the scripture said, The path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day so it there is something more and something more and something more always with god in second corinthians chapter 3 and in verse 18 he said we all beholding us in a glass the glory of the lord we are transformed we are changed into the same image from glory to glory by the spirit of the Lord. So there is a change. There is a transformation. There is a shift that happens all the time with God. It is an abomination to be identified with God and be stagnated in life. It is an abomination to be connected to God and be redundant on it. It is an abuse of association to claim to know God and life does not change. Examples in scripture, the man by the name Abraham was a man that was tied down in a pagan background in penury and poverty until God encountered him and lifted him and shifted him to become the father of the blessing and the father of faith. Moses was a murderer, a fugitive, a vagabond on the run from the law until God met him, turned him into a deliverer and the captain of God's people. Joseph was a slave prisoner in a foreign land until God lifted him and turned him into a generational leader that changed systems and generations. Elisha had no business with the prophetic ministry. He was a mechanized farmer until 
God encountered Elisha and lifted him and shifted him to becoming a prophet after the order of the prophet Elijah. He gave him a double portion of Elijah's unction. Queen Esther was a little girl, an orphan slave girl that was lifted after powerful praying to become the queen of the most powerful empire that existed in that generation. There are people seated here watching and th those watching via the satellite, the internet or the dynamics television whose lives are about to be shifted during this week, during this conference and during this convention. If there is anyone like that, God is speaking to you. Say louder, amen. You will say amen like a believer. A louder believers, amen. Look at somebody by yourself. Said, get ready for a shift and get ready for a lift. I'm going to be very, very fast this morning. Two things I want you to note. Number one, that God is a lifter and a shifter of human lives and destinies. God, we serve a God who is a lifter. A, a God who is a shifter of human lives and destinies. He lifted me, still lifting me. He lifted us as a church, still lifting us and will continue to lift us. Number two, supernatural lifts and shifts happen for those who meet the demands. Supernatural liftings and shiftings happen for those who meet the demand. You want your life to be lifted to another realm spiritually. You want your life to be lifted to another realm financially. You want your life to be lifted to another realm in your career in ministry. Then there are demands. Supernatural lifts and shifts happen for those who meet the demands question someone wants to ask is what then are the demands number one is desperation for a shift and lift desperation that was a young man that I preached in London England this year Came out for the altar call and he's asking me to pray for him so that God can use him to save his generation. It's the young man right there in the front. And then he came from Ireland. Ireland? All right. Right. And then came in for that meeting and God encountered him massively. They are both here. So there are demands. What are the demands? Number one is desperation for a shift and a lift. Desperation brings elevation and desperation breaks stagnation and status quo existence. When you come to the point where you say, I things cannot continue the way they have been with my life, then you are ready for a change of level. It was by desperation that Jacob changed levels. In Genesis chapter 32 and in verse 24, Jacob was left alone. And they are wrestled with him, a man, until the breaking of the day. He wrestled. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. Despe by desperation, Jacob changed levels. There was another person that changed levels by desperation. Her name was Ruth. In the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 17, Ruth spoke to Naomi and he said, I will never leave you. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. God do so to me and more also, if it is not only death that can separate me and you. Ruth, by desperation, Absolute desperation changed levels. 
take note of this first life becomes dynamic when people become desperate life gets dynamic when people are desperate as long as people are satisfied with where they are they are stagnated in life they remain stagnated in life life becomes dynamic when people become desperate secondly understand that changes become drastic when people become desperate the change you are going to experience in life will become very very drastic when you become very desperate and two keys to desperation first refuse to die on the same spot refuse to die on the same spot spiritually to die on the same spot refuse to agree to die on the same spot second refuse to take no for an answer that is desperation the Bible said from the days of John the Baptist up till now, the kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it by force. I see somebody taking it by force today. So the, the first demand is desperation for a shift and a lift. Number two is supplication for a shift and a lift for a lift and a shift in life there is supplication and that is the place of prayer desperation will naturally lead to supplication when people are desperate they express it at the place of prayer they express it at the place of prayer supplication listen to this now and i want you to hear this supplication Desperation will naturally lead to supplication and intercession. That was what Jacob did. He wrestled. He prayed. He made demands. He refused to take no for an answer until something changed. Don't forget what I'm about to say for as long as you live. First, prayer changes people more than it changes things. Prayer changes people much more than it changes things. People think that the purpose of praying is just to change the situation. But the man who prays is changed by his prayer. In the book of Luke chapter 9 verse 29, the Bible said concerning Jesus, as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment was white and glistering. Even if you are not praying for a change of story, your life changes because you pray. And secondly, supplication and intercession will lead to intensification, magnification, and amplification. Supplication and intercession would lead to intensification of things whether it is the anointing or whatever it is it will lead to magnification it will lead to amplification in other words your life cannot remain tiny your ministry your destiny cannot remain tiny if you know how to pray that was how jacob prayed until he changed from jacob to israel Ch jacob is a capacity and israel is a capacity jacob is an individual capacity israel is a nation's capacity a change of capacity happened jacob is a person israel is a nation a change in capacity happened at the place of prayer i don't know who god sent me to here today but I believe that someone is experiencing a change of capacity. There is intensification. There is multiplication. There is amplification. And if you are the one God is speaking to, you will shout the loudest. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, supernatural lifts happen by desperation. 
Number two, by supplication. And what is my counsel for you in the area of, of supplication? Number one, be specific. Jacob said, I will not let you go until something changes in my life. Be specific. And number two, refuse to quit until answer comes. Refuse to quit until the answer comes. I won't let you go. Why should I let you go? Has my life changed? Have I received my answers? Why should I let you go? I can't let you go until you change things for me. And when he didn't let him go, things changed. For someone here this, after, this morning, things are changing. So first is desperation, second is supplication, third is revelation for a lift and a shift. Revelation. Revelation. And I am talking about basically the revelation of the world. In the book of Psalm 105 verse 17, Joseph was in prison. And if you read all the way to verse 20, he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him and the king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Until the time his word came. When your word comes, your lift comes. When your word comes, your lift comes. When your word comes, your world changes. When your word comes, your lift comes. When your word comes, your world changes. When your word comes, everything changes. The Bible said, arise, shine, for your light has come. Light is the fuel for lift. Everywhere you get light, you get a lift. Life, light will sponsor flight. He say in verse 8, in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come. In verse 8, he said, Who are these that fly? People with light are people with feet. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? You cannot carry light and crawl. Light makes for flight. Galatians chapter 2 verse 2. Paul the apostle said, And I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation. Revelation brings elevation. I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation. What do you do for revelation? Ask God for revelation. That will bring you elevation. That is number one. Psalm 119 verse 18 said, Open thou my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Ask God for revelation that will bring elevation. And after you have asked God, second, embark upon a search embark upon his search. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Do Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Lord, I am studying for light. I am, I am, I am, I am in search of light. Give me light. Open my eyes to your light. So, you have desperation. You have supplication. You have Revelation. Number four is sensitivity to divine 
timings and signals. You want your life to lift or to be lifted. You need sensitivity to divine timings and signals. God is not only a God of purpose. He is also a God of seasons. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and in verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and in verse 1. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. To everything, to everything, to everything. God has scheduled a lift for your life. He has scheduled a shift for your destiny. And there is a time for it. People remain on the same spot when they miss their time. People remain on at the same level when they miss their season. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? They remain on the same spot. There is a time. And the Bible said in verse 11. Of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. He makes all things beautiful. He had made everything beautiful in his time. Listen to this. Two things I'd like you to note. First, that destiny is born when purpose marries season. Destiny is born when purpose marries season. When, when purpose gets married to season, the child that will be delivered is called destiny. Listen to this again. Change happens when the right action meets the right timing. Change happens when the right action meets the right timing. Because there are people either doing the wrong thing at the wrong time or doing, or try, or doing the all manner. Change happens when the right action meets the right timing. The day of Pentecost did not meet the apostles eating and drinking. The day of Pentecost did not meet them in a party. The day of Pentecost did not meet them in a jamboree. It didn't meet them in a picnic. The day of Pentecost met them in the upper room. There are people whose day of Pentecost met them in a parlor. Met them, the day of Pentecost, the day of divine visitation, met them in lousiness and laziness, some it made them in iniquity, made them in transgression, lying, cheating, backbiting. Some it made them with full stomach when God wanted an empty stomach in fasting. And their day came, but the action was not there. Are you following what I'm saying here today? And they, when the day, please take your seat. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were at the right place. Doing the right thing. Then something shifted. Don't ever forget. Change happens when the right action meets the right timing. Daniel understood times and seasons. And that understanding sparked the lift for both himself and his generation. In Daniel chapter 9 and in verse 2, he said, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years. So by the reason of that understanding, he set himself to pray. And by praying, the captivity of Judah was turned. Let me say two things in this and then we'll round off with a point number five. First of all, concerning sensitivity to, to divine, sorry, sensitive to divine, not demand, to divine timings 
and seasons concerning sensitivity. Number one, ask God to help you never to miss your timing. Israel missed it once and it became 40 years in the wilderness. It was meant to be a journey of 40 days. In fact, 11 days from the edge of Jordan to Kadesh Barnea. It became 40 years. Lord, help me never to miss my timing. You ask God for that. And secondly, take nothing for granted. Take nothing for granted. As far as it pertains to timing, it pertains to season, it pertains to divine agenda, take nothing for granted. Let us Hallelujah. So, we need the first is desperation. The second is supplication. The third is revelation from the word. The fourth is sensitivity to divine timings and signals. And number five is divine encounter for a lift and shift in life. Divine encounter. Divine encounter is a destiny uplifter. Divine encounter is a destiny uplifter. Divine encounter. Divine encounter is the doorway to life turn around. Divine encounter. Divine encounter. That is when God meets you. Of course, sensitivity will lead to encounters. Abraham encountered God. And he said, get out of your father's house to a land I will show you. That one encounter countered the agenda of the devil. It takes an encounter to count in your generation. It takes an encounter to counter the agenda of the devil around your life. One encounter. Somebody say it loud, amen. One encounter changed Jacob from Jacob to Israel. One encounter lifted and shifted Moses. One encounter. We are in a mountain of encounters. And I'm trusting God for you not to miss it. Say a louder amen. What, how do you get an encounter? Number one, you can, you can desire a, def a divine encounter. Desiring it. In Psalm 63 verse 1 to 2. The psalmist said, Oh Lord. Oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land. We are no water is. I want to see your power. I want to see your glory. As I have seen of thee in the sanctuary. Is God speaking to anybody here? You can desire. A divine 